Today I'm talking about image averaging to help you get cleaner images with less noise. There are a few intermediate skills you need to know in photography, like bracketing, focus stacking and panoramas, and these will really help build on the skills that you have. Now there is one that's not so common that can really help you get much cleaner looking images, and this is image averaging. This is a technique that has become common with wide field astrophotography recently, but it's not so common for landscape, cityscape and aerial photography. It's where you take a series of photos from exactly the same location and then blend them together to give you a cleaner looking image. Noise is always there in your image. If there's more detail, it will be less obvious. But sometimes if you have a big open area of single color in your shot, the noise starts to come through a lot earlier than you'd think. And this is where image averaging can get rid of that unwanted noise. Now, image averaging only really works for certain shots. If you have a lot of movement in your frame, it's not so good for that. But if you take a landscape that doesn't have much motion in it, you can take a series of shots and blend them together afterwards. So let's say you're out walking, you don't have your tripod with you, but you can get a good shot with the ISO at 6400. You can take a burst of say 10 shots and then blend them together afterwards in Photoshop. As long as your hands are steady enough, you should be able to blend them together successfully. This is not always the case, but editing programs are getting better and better as time goes by. And this is great with smaller sensor cameras where the noise might become visible at lower ISOs. If I'm out and about, the light is dropping and I don't have my tripod with me, what I'll do is shoot a burst of images where the shutter is high enough for shooting handheld, keeping the camera as still as possible. Photoshop is actually really good at the auto align as long as you don't move the camera around too much. Also, if you shoot photography with a drone, shooting a burst of five to 10 photos will help you average out the details and get rid of any noise that might occur in your frame. If you have the Mavic 2, you have the option of a burst mode. I have the Mini 2 and I just have to take a load of shots in quick succession. As long as the drone stays still and as long as it's not too windy, you can successfully get a load of shots to blend together afterwards, again, using this auto align feature. And because of that small sensor, if the light is dropping a bit, again, you'll get a lot of noise in a single frame and by blending them together, you'll get rid of a lot of that noise. I already use this in astrophotography. I covered it in a previous tutorial. If you haven't seen that yet, click on the eye in the corner or the link in the description. It is a way of getting a much cleaner image of the night sky. So if you can take a sequence of shots, blend them together, it will get rid of a lot of that noise. When you're doing it with aerial photography, landscapes or cityscapes, you don't have the hassle of lining up the stars with that rotation of the earth. Now with that drone shot I took, you probably noticed that the sea looks very different. When you do a mean average of the images, any movement will blur and the sea does look as if it's a long exposure. And this is a way you can kind of cheat to get the shot where it looks like you had a much longer exposure than you actually did. You can also use this for waterfalls as well if you don't have an ND filter or if you've forgotten your ND filters. You just need to get your exposure as long as you can. Once again, you take a series of five to 10, even 20 shots and then average them out to get a shot that looks like it was taken with a much longer exposure than it actually was. This way isn't perfect, and if you have any gaps between the shots, it is quite easy to see those gaps, especially if it's clouds moving through the sky or if there's any other movement in the shot. But for things like waterfalls, you can very easily make the exposure look longer than it actually was. To blend them together, you do need Photoshop, and it is really easy. There are two ways to do it. The first way is to bring the images into Photoshop as layers in one image. You auto align them, and change the opacities of each layer to suit. This works best if you keep the bottom layer at 100%, the next layer at 50%, third layer at 33, the fourth layer at 25, fifth layer at 20%, the sixth layer at 17%, the seventh layer to 14%, the eighth layer to 12.5%, the ninth layer to 11%, and the 10th layer to 10%. The second way is to load all of the images as layers once again. 
auto align them and then select them all go to layer select smart object convert to smart object then layer smart object stack mode and then mean this way is a much easier way if you have over 10 images and to be honest it's a much easier way anyway I've started using this method with my A6600 and I'm getting much cleaner images from photos in the evening of still subjects, as well as when I'm using my drone for photographs. And like I've been doing for a while with my astrophotography, I do prefer getting things in one shot. But sometimes, if there isn't enough light, your subject is static and you can keep the camera still enough to fire off a series of images, this is a viable option to clean up the noise in your photographs without changing that photograph too much. Now, blending your images to clean up your shot is one thing, but what do you guys think about sky replacement? It is a really contentious issue in photography, and I talk about it in this next video. So if you're thinking about sky replacements, you need to watch this now.